Welcome to another episode of Nerd Social. This time we're going to be talking about... In this special, we're going to cover basically how to cosplay, uh, little cool tips and tricks that you might be able to gain from this, and then also what to do when you're at a convention. Uh, we're going to sit here with some amazing experts in the field. We're going to start with introduce ourselves. Hey guys, I'm Brian, otherwise known as Ohai Bonsai Cosplay. I'm Erin, aka Other Tall Girl. And I'm Samantha, aka Red Pandroid. I'm Angela, or Angelari. Now that we've introduced ourselves, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, the first one has to do with planning. So if you've got a character, what you want to do with it, we're going to go through what kind of steps of this. Uh, so let's just jump into it. When you're going to a convention, you're going to dress up as somebody. But, I mean, there's so many cool things that you can have an interest in, that you have like, a love for. Uh, and every year, there's just more awesome content coming out, awesome characters. And it becomes like, how do you choose? what you want to do. How do you like, oh, I want to be this guy, I want to be this guy, I want to be this guy, I want to be this guy. And you're limited only really by how many days are in the conventions, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mid day, go back to the hotel room. Yeah. I've known cosplayers who've done that. It's almost like the evening gown. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much. And so uh, that being said, like, you know, when it comes down to picking what characters you want to do, how do you guys choose what characters of the groups that you love you want to do? I think definitely, uh, at least for me, I really like to cosplay characters that I feel like I can kind of vibe with. Like, they're definitely a character that I feel, like, connection with. Um, I think lately, uh, my last cosplay was Cloud Strife. And, I mean, he's just been an icon since my childhood. And, in a way, for this cosplay, it was something that always resonated with me because it reminded me of, you know, growing up playing Final Fantasy. And he was just such an icon character to me that uh, when I chose to do him, it was mainly because you know this is this is kind of who I grew up with. You know, this is who I want to want to be on portray, uh, and just because it's such a great character, I'm like I would love. It. I think resonating with that is really cool. Not to interrupt. That cosplay was awesome. Oh, thank I was you. Watching that, like, that was, it literally like it jumps out. It's like that looks like it came from the video game, thank you. like the promotional art. <laughs> like, this is what the character looked like. It was real. <laughs> it was really good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think um, just picking a character that you love and that you feel like a connection with is something that's within my range of how I pick my next cosplays. Yeah, that will definitely get you through like the, the later heart parts we'll go over when things kind of get a little difficult. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you love it, it's more like a, like a passion project almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty, pretty much, much exactly. Yeah. yeah, most definitely. That's I think that's a big part of how I choose what I'm going to make as well. Um, combine kind of that like personal resonance with the character with like what type of project I want to do, like what materials I want to work with, um, and just like what type of thing I want to build. One of my uh, big costumes that I built in the last few years was, several years ago I built an R2-2-2, which is basically a ballet version <laughs> of R2-D2, because I'm a lifelong Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. um, and I came up with this pun one day. Um, and so I wanted to remake like a real traditional Russian ballet version of it. So I actually started learning ballet at the same time I made the costume. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> that is, that is definitely dedication. We're like, I have a cosplay costume. It's going to require a year of learning ballet. <laughs> yeah, legit. Three years later, I'm still doing ballet, but my oh. goal was to be on point in the costume. So I started, it took me about nine months to make the costume because just all the layers. It's got 1,500 Swarovski crystals on it. Whoa. It is bananas. Um, and I debuted it at... Um, uh, Labyrinth of Jareth, which is this big masquerade ball. If, if anyone has not heard of Labyrinth of Jareth, it is an amazing convention they do in Los Angeles. They've been doing it for, I think, almost like 20 years now. Yeah, last year was the 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a pretty old point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a while, actually. Back I've never had the music box or something. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, such, such a great, great convention. They put up just like, like, just experience. experience. So, so, I mean, cost doesn't, doesn't have to just be for conventions. You can, you can do, do it for something, something like this, this where it's like a, like a, like a mask raid ball. Mm -hmm. And you and don't you have to be specifically tailored to just labyrinth themed costumes. They, they just, everything's, everything's there. It's awesome. It's sort of anything fantasy related. Yeah, but that costume for me was kind of the perfect combination of like something I wanted to learn, a process I wanted to learn, making a traditional Russian tutu, um, a character that I had always loved my entire life, and then also like a skill I'd never learned before, dancing. And so it, that was kind of like the perfect trifecta for me. 
Did you have like a partner to be like C-3PO or no? I do. Actually, my best friend, is, uh, her name is Keisha, and she is almost 6'2". Oh, wow. So we're like, I'm, <laughs> I'm only 5'4", so we're like the perfect height difference, and she was my C-3 plie. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. I love a play on words. Star Wars puns are my favorite. That's very funny. It's very funny. <laughs> How about for you when it comes to picking out like a character you want to do? Yeah, so... When I'm watching a show, I usually pick one character that I want to be, and every one of them goes on the list, but not all of them are executed. Uh, that would be way too much time that I do not have. <laughs> um, but it also helps if your friends watch the shows, so then you can kind of prioritize, like, okay, if this person is going to be this character, it pairs with this character that I'm being, and we can organize some kind of meetup at the con. And then you also have to think of the construction of the outfit. So I take that into consideration a lot. Um, I feel like everyone's kind of covered <laughs> for very big reasons. Um, I do, um, since I'm quite crafty, I like anything that has like a lot of like a good character design, or even like an AU design. Like I, I got, I love that. <laughs> that I will take that. I will, even if I don't have the skills, I like learn that. And that's also it's like a big thing that I like to I consider when. That's actually a really good kind of thing to, to go next. The next thing I want to talk about is turning that uh, idea of a costume, what the character is, and turning it into an outfit, to a costume. Because, I mean, when they design these characters sometimes, they're not really planning for, like, you know, like, someone's going to make that now. Uh, put that on. So, I mean, like, it's not exactly easy to be all like, hey, look, this is the thing, and this is what I want to do. So, but do you guys feel like there's some difficulties there? I mean, like, you can't exactly have, like, a giant sword... Uh, for, like, a lot of fantasy type stuff because it's like one that's heavy and it, like it doesn't hold. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think definitely when it comes to kind of planning your cosplays, uh, really think about is this feasible and and doable and in like a manner that's compliant with the con. Um, I know when I was making my cluster sword, I mean that thing is six feet from from end to end. Yeah. Um, and I was looking at it, I was like, okay, I can't do this out of wood because that's gonna be really difficult to carry for six, seven hours at a time. Um, and I know like, I would get tired of it like at, at some point during the con. So for that problem, my solution was I'll, I was going to do it out of EVA foam, which is going to be a lot lighter and a lot easier to work with uh, throughout the whole con. But easier to break though, right? It is easier to break. Yeah. This is why I, I'm very careful about it. Um, I try to not do anything kind of drastic for poses or anything that's going to kind of like rest it against something that would either bend it or break it. I mean, there is a five and a half foot PVC pipe that runs along the whole blade just for stability, but overall it is foam. So if you did try to forcibly like bend it, there are some parts that probably will bend, but I mean, that's kind of like a trade-off for having a lighter sword versus having something that's, you know, a lot heavier and like bulkier. So it's really how you want to interpret it and how you want to pull it off. Do you ever let people who want to take a picture with you hold it in the picture? Or are you all like, no, that's my baby? It, it, it depends. Um, usually, like, before, if someone asks, like, oh, can I take a picture with you? are holding it? I'm like, yeah, sure, just here, hold it first, just so you know. Like, what this, you're is gonna hold it. this is all yeah. you can hold it with. Yeah, like, just, just so you know. Because like, I've, I've had some people go, like, oh, this is lighter. I've had some people go, okay, well, it's actually quite heavy. I was like, yeah, yeah. So it, it really just depends. Um, because... You know, you never really want people to drop your prop or as a, because I've had, had that happen at Contour where someone's dropped something or, and it's really fine because, you know, it's just falling and it'll like bounce or whatever and stuff, but it's still something you're kind of like, whoa, like, oh, like, please don't be careful, like, no, that's my child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's funny you should bring that up because, so design versus construction is a little bit kind of a topic I want to go into, but we'll just merge this together to be honest because that is kind of a part of it. Like, for instance, you seem like you're more of the school like I am. Me personally, if I wanted to have a costume, there's like, oh, I could make this out of like materials that make sense, like leather. Mm -hmm. And then like it's a cool thing that I have that'll last a while. Or there's things you can make out of like foam and stuff, and it's lighter mm -hmm. and it's easier to use. Mm -hmm. But like on that same plane though, like there's a trade off there. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I love the idea of having like the leather and like, the thicker pieces. Mm -hmm. Like I will walk around with a piece of metal armor on in a convention in like blistering sun <laughs> because the coolness of the fact of having yeah. that item for me outweighs the, the ease of the lightweightness. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that kind of has to factor in a little, right? Like, what are you trading off? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think for that trade-off, um, something to consider is, are you competing with this cosplay, or are you wearing it just 
for the con itself. Because if you're not really competing, in my view, it's, you know, are you going to sacrifice comfortability? Because if you're going to be walking a con, you know, six, seven hours, if you're wearing, you know, heels or like stilts or something that's like populate your character, that can get really tired really fast. And if you plan for the day to just be walking around the con and just enjoying the con itself, that's gonna be a factor that's gonna really tire you out fast and kind of kill your mood for how you want to approach the con. Versus if you're doing something for a cosplay contest, you know, you're only gonna be on the stage for you know a few minutes or so. And that's a lot more bearable than having to wear that for a whole day's worth. I went to Comic-Con uh, wearing a jumpsuit for the, the Lone Wanderer. Uh, that, Go to the bathroom was hell. Oh. <laughs> uh, like there's, and that's just like the basic of the costume. So there's, there's, there's definitely some trade off on comfort, yeah. like just to begin with. Mm -hmm. But yeah, what about you guys? You guys experience anything like that? There's definitely like a balance you have to strike. I think with like accuracy, like visually, and also like comfortability and ease of getting in and out. I've definitely mm -hmm. gotten myself trapped like in my rogue jumpsuit. That's a two person job to like. Get in the zipper so you can go to the bathroom. Um, and, like, Rogue wears, like, heels like this. And at Comic-Con, that's not really practical. Yeah. So you have to think, like you said, think about how long you're going to be in it, how comfortable is it. But at the same time, like, my she costume, um, it's all real armor. So this is leather, wet molded leather. The breastplate is... Which is awesome. Which I brought. Is, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Like, actual kind of, actual armor. Um and it's, it's based on a uh, piece by Tess Fowler that's like kind of a medieval version of She-Ra, and I really wanted it to be accurate, but it's actually pretty comfy. The breastplate is only, you know, your midsection, and then the skirt is made of um, aluminum scale mail. So, that's so cool. it's pretty heavy, but once you have it on, it... Disperses. Yeah, the weight disperses. It's not too bad. I wore it at Comic-Con, uh, not last year, the year before, all, all day. Um, and it ended up being pretty comfy, except for sitting down. Scale mail is not real comfortable to sit on, just FYI. Um, <laughs> but uh, I tend, I think, to veer onto the, like, I want it to look accurate, and a little discomfort is okay side of things for me, but everybody's different, so you got to find what works for you. Yeah, when I'm at a con, I just keep thinking beauty is pain. <laughs> I don't mean to basically like throw out the gender yeah. thing, but isn't that kind of a lot with women? I mean, heels just to begin with uh, is I mean, pain, right? When I'm not at a con, I'm usually very chill. <laughs> so yeah, I just kind of yeah, all in one go, Fair weekend, <laughs> one weekend. Yeah, an important thing to remember though is cosplay is just a hobby, so don't sacrifice your well-being, like health. Like you need to stay hydrated. You need to use the bathroom and eat, so make sure you can do all of those things in your cosplay for the con. But like, if you're just doing it for a contest, you're only wearing it for like maybe 30 minutes, so you can sacrifice practical. Practical. This is the last one on the stage. Then you're yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That reminds me of another thing too, though. Like uh, making sure you have a place to put your stuff is a really easy thing to forget when you're building a pouch. <laughs> oh, like you need a pouch. Yeah, and then like you get it all on, and you're like, okay, great. Where am I gonna put my phone? <laughs> <laughs> you're like medieval Shira does not have a, no. a little pouch. No, Shira she needs does a not need a phone. So um, unless you have like a buddy or a handler or somebody who's gonna be awesome and hold your stuff for you all day. Hide a pocket, like in the inside of your mm -hmm. robe jacket. Make a pocket. Make one in your boot somewhere that, like, I've you seen, know, won't mess up the lines of your costume. But uh, get creative and don't forget pockets. I have yeah. seen some really interesting things you can like hide in your props, like little things. Mm -hmm. little bit, like shields are a great way oh, yeah. to hide, <laughs> yeah. like little pouches and little zipper pouches for like your phone and your wallet. Just you know, don't lose your shield. But then again, I mean, yeah. what self respecting cosplayer loses a prop, all right? <laughs> <laughs> So the last thing I'll talk about in this one before we go over to the actual being at conventions has to do with getting to the conventions in a way. So say, for instance, you're going to San Diego Comic-Con, which is a five-day Comic-Con event if you're going for preview night. That is five days. Five outfits? Do you choose a day where you don't, where you go cause naked? Uh, so they say, they call it fair naked when you go to a Renaissance Fair, so I imagine it's the same thing with cosplay, right? Uh, or like, do you, do you want to get every single day to use every one of the costumes you might have had for like prior cons, get the full use? Is this thing you want to do every day or so not every day? So for me personally, I went to Comic Con and I brought a costume for every every day, a different costume, one time. <laughs> by the end of that Comic Con, I was so tired, and like the last day, I was like, I don't even want to put this costume. On. <laughs> so, I didn't bring regular clothes. Yeah. Like I did, but I was committed. I made those costumes. I was gonna wear them. Um, if you're gonna do that, I always suggest having like 
maybe sandwich it, do like a comfortable cosplay, a more, mm -hmm. more challenging one, and then like a casual cosplay. I'm just cosplaying the character in pajamas. <laughs> yeah, like for me, I'm like... They have to wear pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> if I put on a plaid shirt, I'm like, oh, maybe pond, you know? Uh, <laughs> like, so give with, yourself an easy out for a day that you don't feel, maybe feel like doing the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. With like a whole con worth of stuff, though, like for me, when I go to con the convention, I have the car filled, though. Filled. Like we have like every seat's filled, the trunk is to the brand, people have bags in their laps. How do you bring five outfits in that trip? Well, like a spandex jumpsuit folds down real small. <laughs> <laughs> leather armor. That, you know, this this gets its own like full size Tupperware bin just for She-Ra. Um, but I don't usually bring multiple costumes of this yeah. like uh, carrying capacity as it were. Fair enough. Yeah, definitely. I think um, when I when I plan out my cosplays for cons out of multiple days, I try to think, okay, what can I fit in my car? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! How do you get the sword there? So, <laughs> so I actually leave it. It kind of I have to angle it kind of along the car so that outside of it? No, no, it's, it's just the inside. You're like, so, right, like you're jousting. Like, what's going on here? So essentially, we have it on the driver's seat, passenger seat, and the back seats. I have to lay it on the seat behind the driver and kind of diagonally so it sits into the front passenger seat. I would love to go to con with you, Steve. <laughs> Unfortunately, your seat was taken up by my sword. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have people ask me, some of my friends are like, oh, dude, are you going with it? Can I carpool with you? I said, yeah, sure. Uh, there's going to be a six-foot sword, though, if you don't mind holding part of it in your lap. To which they say... I'll take the bus. Uh, what? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm bringing Cloud. And they go... Okay, uh, like it's, it's a big sword. Uh, I can't fit it in the trunk all the way. And go, okay. Explaining <laughs> costumes to people who don't wear costumes it's, is so difficult it's, sometimes. It's, it's funny because I went through a drive through of a Starbucks one morning, and, oh my God. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the Buster sword was sitting right there. And then uh, I remember the guy was eating my drink, and like, is that the Buster sword? <laughs> and I, I didn't know what to say, so I just looked at him and I was like, yeah. And, and then he said, like, oh, where are you going? And I said, oh, there's a convention going on, and he's just like, oh, that's cool, dude, is, like, is, where's, where's Cloud? And I said, oh, uh, it's, it's for a friend. <laughs> like, meanwhile, the wig is sitting, like, on the back seat, and then he was just like, oh, okay, cool, thanks, bye. <laughs> but, so, it's just a matter of planning, you know, how much can you take, what can fit in your car that's practical, are you having passengers in your car, um, again, if you have, like, an SUV or something larger, that helps a lot. Um, typically, when I pick my cosplays, if I'm if I know I'm doing an armored cosplay, because I store all my armor in like you know pretty big tubs, just so I, you know, oh this tub is for Genji, like you know this tub is for Ventus, you know everything. So I know for Khan, whenever I bring Genji, because all the armor is in the I'm already tub. Genji, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I need I need to request healing every every five minutes, but it's in a pretty big tub, so that takes up a whole pretty much car seat, and so I know okay I can't really bring another cosplay like that along the way. So I'll bring something that's, you know, like clothing based, like Sora, I can fold up, you know, put in like a little backpack, everything else I can fold and put in backpacks. It's mainly, I try to limit to one armor set per con, if it's huge. Um, do you guys have anything on that? I mean, I guess it really depends. I go to a lot of um, cons in Northern California. Okay. So like, it's like, my taking a plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> um, oh, fair enough. That, then you basically just ship them, right? <laughs> I do drive there a lot, so often I do take a car, but sometimes, not me, but I've had a friend who's had, who's had stuff get morphed in the oh, heat, yeah. so yeah. that's always a thing you have to consider if you're going to be driving through California in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Especially during AX. Moving kind of into the convention now, um, we talked about it a little bit with regards to the sword and stuff like that, con rules. Yeah. Have you ever designed a costume uh, that has a f been affected by con rules? Like, where they said, no, you can't do that. Or you just like, I don't want to be harassed by people. Um, I think the only issue I've run into is uh, when I wore She-Ra, um, they had to zip tie my sword into the sheath. Mm -hmm. uh, which originally I wasn't going to make a sheath for it, because she doesn't have one in the drawing. Um, but I was like, I don't want to carry this around the whole time. So, so they had to piece tie it? So they piece tied it. And I would... Uh, it kind of was a little bit disappointing for photos because you can't do the, you know, power of grayscale. But um, I got a lot of photos outside of the con. Tin so. steps, by the way. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I could have, but 
Yeah, no, I wanted to comply, so. Fair enough. I don't have too many weapons for my costumes <laughs> at the moment. No wands? <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't uh, piece that out here. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so I haven't really experienced anything like that because most of my cosplays don't require extra items. Yeah, it does change too, like, um, that was uh, Comic-Con a couple of years ago. A few years before that, I was in a, a steampunk DC comics uh, group, and for my um, Nightwing, I had real wooden batons, like truncheons, uh, and they just put a little like tag on them and yeah. just let me around with two wooden truncheons. Yeah, they actually don't care about anything unless it's got like a point or looks like a gun. Yeah. Uh, that's when they start to freak out about stuff right. like that. And of course, like I would never use it to hurt somebody, but... You um, could. But, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone gets a little handsy during picture time. Someone, <laughs> yeah, less, less nice Done. than me might have been able to. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, cons can be a little bit tough. I mean, they take a lot of a beating on you, besides the rules, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but there is a, uh, a really high increasing amount of uh, costume repair spots oh, popping yeah. up at conventions. LA Comic Con had one, San Diego Comic Con will every once will have one. Have you guys experienced, and I don't mean in the way of like Super Bowl with Justin Timberlake malfunctions, <laughs> but have you guys had like wardrobe malfunctions or costume malfunctions at conventions? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, at LA Comic Con, uh, when I was cosplaying Cloud, a friend of mine was cosplaying Zach Fair, and the sh shoulder piece of his armor fell off. Like it just detached and then, you know, we were like, oh my god, what do we do? Luckily, so every time someone asked for a photo, he would take the buster sword and <laughs> pull it down. So I was like, oh, I'm just, I'm just leading the sword like out here. And so it, clever. It, it worked. So it was clever. perfect. But cosplay repair stations at cons are like a saving grace. Because, you know, even though you don't want anything to go wrong, always be prepared and expect that something will probably break, something will probably fall off, some you'll probably trip, or some mishap will happen. If it doesn't happen, you're at least prepared for it. I mean, I know like all my friends at least carry like a little bit of like Loctite glue. And duct tape, right? Yeah, duct tape. tape. This, you need a quick fix. <laughs> there it goes. So, so when you hear they're doing a like repair station at the convention, like some like company like Sprint is like teaming up with mm -hmm. T-Mobile, it's putting that together. Does it mean like, oh, one less bag I have to carry? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> if, if you have a friend, you know, who's not really cosplaying and he's have a backpack, but if you know you're just by yourself at a convention and you need a repair you know those things are your saving grace like if something falls off your armor you know bam like you can get it fixed on the spot you don't have to you know if you because it really sucks when you have something break and you can't fix it and you're just kind of like well i can't really wear the whole cosplay now Dude, especially if there's something that's really like iconic to your character yeah. and it, it's like a killer for like like if the, the wig fell apart on the cloud yeah yeah, 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 yeah exactly it's like then, you know what happens at that point you, yeah if you don't have the tools you need to fix it it's kind of like well do i want to wear like part of a cosplay or do i want to Try to go back to the hotel, see if I have anything I can fix it with. It's you know, it, it's kind of it throws in an extra wrench. Like into yeah. sometimes part of a cosplay isn't that bad because if something breaks and you repair it and then it breaks again, I'd say just ditch it because it's gonna cost you more trouble than it's worth. Honestly, and you can remake it later for another time you're gonna uh, go to a con as that character. Um, people will still recognize who you are and. It's not worth like stressing over, honestly. Just enjoy the con the rest of the time that you have there, and then the next day you can fix it. Yeah, as, as long as it doesn't like destroy to the part where like you're like holding it up. Like, oh, you're yeah, fine. yeah. yeah. Like, oh my god, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Always bring extra shoes just in case. Oh, your, oh, wow. your boot breaks. That happens. Oh, once. a change of flat shoes is a really good idea. Yeah. If you can. <laughs> there was a, a mall that started basically selling like in like a vending machine flat shoes you could pick up. Oh, and there yeah. are some places yeah. you can so literally like, roll up and put it in a pocket. They're so small. Yeah. But there's just like a thin sole to, yeah, to, exactly. to put on. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, I think that's probably the biggest struggle that I've had with like something going awry at a convention is like, oh, these shoes that were comfortable for like an hour are not comfortable <laughs> for all I'm day. now missing skin on part of my foot. <laughs> yeah, like, oh no. <laughs> they have these uh, these little pads you can put inside the shoes. So sometimes they're shaped like flowers and whatnot, but they're designed yes. for parts, hard parts of shoes mm -hmm. that rub on skin that you might not oh, notice. Yeah. 
until you're wearing it for a while. I'd recommend any cosplayer just throw a couple of those. Mm -hmm. Or band-aids, band -aids, Yeah, band-aids, yeah. too. Sometimes Electrical tape like can help. Sometimes I just, like, pre-band-aids <laughs> yeah, exactly. because I know that that's going to happen. <laughs> just get some uh, of that, uh, was it, the ace bandage? Just like, wrap your foot. Yeah, like a wrap your foot. The next thing is about, I, I want to get your guys' opinions about what we call pro cosplayers. Pro, pro cosplayers, people that they literally have, like, websites. Um, they're invited to conventions. Um, and they have the booths where they do the signings. Mm -hmm. uh, now, in my opinion, when I see a cosplayer, I think of people that walk around the con that are just enjoying the con and they're dressing. I'm not saying that you can't be a professional cosplayer and you can't have a booth, but, I mean, do you think that it's the natural progression or do you feel you kind of lose something being able to enjoy the con by walking around in the way that you like doing it as opposed to sitting in a booth and people would come to you? What do you guys think? I definitely say if you're going to do it, then it's a lot of work. And go for it if you have the time, if you have resources to do it. Um, having a booth there is a great way to connect with people who follow you. Um, it's very organized and you won't get mobbed at certain times that you don't want to be. Like if you're eating lunch, you can just like sit back behind the booth and like not look at anyone. And they'll just keep like walking by. Um, but then there are scheduled times where you can meet with those people. And I know those people would like love to meet you. So I do believe it is a natural progression because there is going to be sort of a celebrity in any entertainment mm -hmm. industry. Everyone always needs a follower, right? Exactly, yeah. That's, that's the hope, right? <laughs> <laughs> and not everyone has the like inclination or the bandwidth to do right. that because it is, like you said, it's a lot of work. Like from the social media up, upkeep to like going to all the cons and being in your booth uh, and actually making the cosplays. And a lot of them do like tutorials um, to help other people learn how to do cosplay and stuff. Um, so I think it's great for people that, that want to do that and have the time to do it. I think it's awesome. Personally, I like to just kind of go and walk around the con. I'm more of an introvert, so I'm good with like people coming up and wanting to take photos of my costume because, yeah, I made this thing. Um, but sit, sitting in a booth all day talking to people, oh, that sounds exhausting. <laughs> my, uh, my amazing wife basically refuses to cosplay at conventions anymore because she gets tired of having to try to go from point A to point B. And like have people that be like stopping and taking pictures. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's there's like levels of it. like it's like it's up to a point you're like oh that's awesome and then like when you're trying to go to the bathroom though oh, and yeah. you're all like I just I'm like I can see it I can <laughs> literally see it can I get a picture too and like they just like they tack on and it's like okay I'm here for an hour. <laughs> so at that point that the catheter really helped out right. <laughs> it's part of the costume. <laughs> Actually, the space I think the excitement for people that want to take photos, like, because, you know, they love your character, too. Mm -hmm. That kind of always outweighs the, like, I'm trying to get some place for me, because that's part of the reason you're there. Um, the one thing I will say, though, is if you want a photo of somebody who's in a costume, go up and ask. They're wearing this for a reason. They will be happy to take a photo for you. Um, the only people that kind of irk me a little bit are the people that will, like, try to, like, drive by, take a photo of you. And it's like, just ask, I'll do a nice pose and it'll look way cooler. <laughs> yeah. Get the good side. Yeah, because then they're like, do it getting like a blurry, like me making a derp face like, yeah. while they're going by. But those are like the best. <laughs> For them. It's funny. Um, the next thing I want to ask, it's pretty much the last thing before we finish up, is about, you know, they're what they call like the masquerades, uh, things like that. It's the event usually at the conventions in which they have the costume and the cosplay contests. Are those worth it? And when I say that, I mean like you guys put in a lot of work and do this stuff, but like a lot of other people do. And the, the likelihood that you're going to get a prize from it to go through the whole process of the rimmer to wait to go up on stage, to put on a little performance, which have become like little mini TV shows in some conventions. Like San Diego Comic Con, they, they literally put on a mini play with their costumes of some of these people. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and it's like, am I being judged now on my, my choreography or am I being judged on the costume? Like, do you guys think it's worth it? Is it better to do it on the smaller conventions than the larger conventions? What do you guys think? I think regardless, you know, of the outcome, it's, in my opinion, I think it's worth it. You know, it's, if you're working to make a cosplay that, you know, you put your heart and soul into and you feel like it's something that you really want to showcase to the community as a whole on stage, definitely go for it. I mean, you have nothing to lose, and you're showcasing, you know, all the hard work and talent that you put into this cosplay. And I feel like that's something that's, you know, that's your heart and soul right there. Especially if you poured all of it into making this, and to share that with everyone, you know, on stage, I feel like that in itself is like a reward. So I definitely think it's worth it in that sense. 
Um, I've never participated in a masquerade or anything like that. I don't think I ever will, <laughs> but I love going to them. I love watching them. Your costume uh, is awesome, by the way. Oh, I want you to know that. <laughs> like, you're really cool. That's awesome. I love it a lot. Thank you. It's perfect. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, like for me personally, I I would just get way too nervous. I like I, I'm not here to like compete. I'm just here to have fun. But um, I love watching them. So like, props to anyone who's like doing them. And so, I think I think if anyone wants to do it, they should definitely go for so it. So worth it, just not worth it for you. It's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with. Them. Both of their opinions. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what I was gonna say. So um, uh, it's, it'll just be a good experience overall. And if you don't like the first time, you don't have to do it again. Okay, that's you really don't. That's a good point. Yeah, I think uh, I've actually never participated in a masquerade contest really? either. No, I always get so caught up in like having fun and like interacting <laughs> with people like on the con floor and outside and taking photos that I'm like, oh yeah, the masquerade sign up is over. Oops. <laughs> so I've never actually done it, uh, but it looks super fun. And I think if you want to, go for it. it. Like you said, if you don't enjoy it, you don't have to do it again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that pretty much concludes uh, our, our discussion. Before we go, I'd like to give you guys an opportunity to talk about what projects you're working on, what conventions you're going to. So why do you start off with this? So I think definitely um, my next convention is most likely going to be either TitanCon or Fanime. Uh, got a lot of uh, stuff that I'm working on under wraps. It is Kingdom Hearts related. Um, it is from 3. Because <laughs> I've done Sora's our, um, original outfit from 3 already, but I do want to expand on that a little more. So that's my next big project that I'm working on which I'm aiming to have done by family. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully that goes well, but that's, that's a tentative plan that I'm going for. So I will be at WonderCon this year. Um, I know definitely that Saturday I'm going to be Black Canary, and I'm going to have an Ollie with me. And then um, I recently started a Patreon, so it is literally Other Tall Girl, like my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as well. Um, I should be going to WonderCon too, and I'm going to be wearing my Shira costume um, for the second time to a con, so it should be fun. Um, I'm not really working on any new costumes right now because I just started uh, my own business, um, which you can find my Etsy at. Um, Etsy shop is called Stiarna. It's S T I A R N A. Um, and I make this kind of uh, Norse inspired leather and chainmail jewelry. and. Um, soon to be clothing also. Um, and I have a, um, a, a print on demand shop and design my humans, this is my logo for Stiarna. So I've got lots of cool kind of nerd and history inspired um, designs on there. That's what I'm working on right now. Um, I'll probably be at WonderCon, I'm not sure yet, but I'm definitely gonna be at Fanime. Um, I'm actually currently, so I commissioned um, Hannah Alexander, an aqua version of, uh, I don't know, she's like an artist who does like Art Nouveau style cosplays, um, so I am working on that tirelessly. <laughs> to, so basically Aqua, but Hannah Alexander, and I'm very excited about it. So that will be definitely at Fanime. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you next week. Before you go, again, this is Seven Deadly Fairies. We film here pretty much regularly at this point. Uh, if you see anything that you like here, you can find it on the website, sevendeadlyfairies.com, or here in store at 2725 East uh, Colorado Boulevard at Pasadena. Please stop by if you like anything that's here, comment about it, purchase it. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time.